Goedemorgen, Raad Elwe, en welkom bij vandaagse online klas. Today we will look at the poem Here Be Dragons. We gaan naar die gedicht kijken Here Be Dragons, geschreven door Isaac de Vries. Isaac de Vries is een Zuid-Afrikaanse dichter en schrijver. Hij is op 19 jaar in 1969 in Port Elizabeth geboren. Hij schrijft reeds vanaf je ouderdom van 15. En hy het een eenmaal groot in Afrikaans en Nederlands. Wanneer ons na een gedicht kijkt, is het belangrijk om eerst van onszelf af te vragen: um, hoe lijkt dit? Hoe lijkt die uiterlijke bouw? Wat vertelt die gedicht voor ons die dat ons net daarna kijkt? Wat doen we zien? So wanneer ons naar die gedicht hier bij Dragons kijkt, Sien ons nege strofes. Een strofe is een stanza. En ons sien dat die gedicht bestaan meestal uit kwatreine. Now grade 11, it's important that you know that we get different types of stanzas. Een strofe wat uit vier versreels bestaan, noem ons een kwatrein. Een strofe wat uit drie versreels bestaan, noem ons een tersine. En... Wanneer ons een strofe sien wat net een vers wil het, dan noem ons dit alleen plaasing. So in hierdie gedig sien ons dat daar, daar is meestal kwatreine, behalwe waar die dichter specifieke gedagtes wil beklem toon. Um, sien ons dat die strofes korter is. So daar is een of twee strofes wat um, een tersine is elk en dan sien ons ook alleen plaasing in die gedig. Wanneer ons naar die gedig kyk, sien ons daar 27 versreels en ons weet ook, dit is een vrije vers gedig. Een vrije vers beteken die strofes en die versreels lentes verskil. Daar is geen vaste ruimpetroon nie en daar is min of geen leesteken of hoofletter gebruik. Okay, so we see that the length of the stanzas and the lines differ. We see that there is no fixed rhyming pattern and we see, see that there are very little or no uh, punctuation marks, very few punctuation marks and um, not a lot of capital letters used. So let's talk about the title. Ons moet vir ons self Waarom juist die specifieke titel? There is always a, um, definitely um, a strong connection between the title of a poem and the content of the poem. And we have to ask ourselves, why did the, the poet um, use or choose this specific title? And let's look at the title. It's interesting, it's an English title, Here Be Dragons. So obviously, if we think of our prior knowledge, we have to ask ourselves, what is the context, where, you know, where does this come from? So, um, the title verwijst naar the gebruik eeuwe gelede om drake of dragons in ander sea monsters, sea monsters, op wereldkaarte aan te teken. Vooral op dele wat nog onbekend was. Mense het nie geweet wat daar is nie. Die drake was aangeteken op plekke waar die ontdekkingsreisigers nog nie was nie. En dinge dalk gevaarlik kon wees. So if you look at that picture, I want you to imagine many, many, many years ago when... Um, People still explored new territory or new terrain or um, yeah, reached new land. Um, they used these old maps to go and try and explore and find new places that has ne never been discovered. But in those olden days and year many years ago, people were scared of the unknown and they used dragons or sea monsters to actually, and they they have made um, drawings on maps to indicate that they are they might be danger or um, it's possibly it's unknown terrain and there's a possibility that we can find anything there. So um, I want you to have this picture of as ons praat van a um, seafarders of 
ontdekkingsreisigers, die die um, seafarers of, of people um, on an expedition to, to explore new terrain. And um, the Yerby dragons is actually then a metaphor um, in, well, not a metaphor, but a, a picture of of the possibility of danger, and yes, it is a metaphor of danger. Maar as jylle kyk op die, op die slide, um, sien jylle daar rechts onder het ek ook, there's a text box where you will see where it is applicable in our content of our poem that we are going to discuss today. Hier die oudtijdse verwysing, referring to Yerby Dragons as a term used many years ago, is a metaphor vir die moderne gevare op die internet vandag. Net soos hou seevaders nieuwe wereldbele ontdek het, net so soek jong mense nieuwe inlichting op die internet. So if you listened to the um, recording of the poem, you would have read or listened and heard that there were quite a few references to the internet and um, you know, our modern day and technology. So, Year Be Dragons is the title, but it's also a metaphor for the modern day dangers that we find on the World Wide Web, the internet. And just like um, uh, the uh, people many years ago went on expeditions to um, search for new land and explore and find new territory. In the same way, young people today are surfing the net and surfing the internet to find new terrain and new information. Goed, so die titel sal nog bykie meer sin maak, soos wat ons die inhoud van die gedig bespreek. The title will make a lot more sense as we dissect each line and go through the poem stanza by stanza. Another element that we look at is the person speaking in the poem, die spreker. Goed, I want you to always remember that the person speaking in the poem is not necessarily the person who wrote the poem. In our case today, if we look there, um, we have the first person speaker. Um, that is a young son, but with his father. So we have a young boy speaking with his father. He is addressing his father in the poem. He's, he's, he's speaking out of the first person, using pronouns like "ek" and "jij" and "ons." Good. And this son surf via his father's rekenaar in wachtwoord op the internet. The internet is for the speakers as a ontdekkings reis. So this boy is surfing the, in, the internet via his dad's computer and password. And um, surfing the net is like an adventure to him. An adventure where he is exploring new terrain. Here the ontdekkings reis. How net soos ontdekkings reis sy eeuwe gelede beloftes en gevare in. So this adventure that he, he, this exploring of the internet, just like many years ago where people explored new territory, this exploration or um, expedition on the internet can have lots of um, wonderful things um, or it can also have a lot of danger. Um, yes. Goed, en die laaste punt daar, die sien vraag vir sy pa om vir hom ruimte en vryheid te gee, maar ook dat hy daar vir hom sal wees as dinge skeef loop. So, um, we read in this poem, and we'll see this as we read it now, stanza by stanza, that this boy initially asks his dad to give him space and freedom to, to gain knowledge um, his own way and to explore um, certain things. But then he also asks his dad that his dad will be there for him um, and support him if things um, don't work out or when there's danger. Goed. Strofe 1 Paase kode draf ek in die oogwink kaf. 
Mijn mais surf dwingend op nieuwe ruimtes af. Ons sien daar paase kode woord, dit draf ek in die oogwink kaf. So we immediately see the person speaking in the poem, the first person narrator. It's a young boy saying that, talking to his dad, sy pa, en hy sê, pa, sy kode woord, draf ek in die oogwink kaf. Pa, sy kode woord is his password, en as ons praat van, as jy iets in die oogwink kaf draf, beteken dit, he masters something very quickly. So, meaning that he, um, he, he can hack into his dad's computer, if that is the right terminology, but he, it is easy for him to, to figure out his dad's password. Um, and then say hy, my mouse surf dwingend op nieuwe ruimtes af. So, my mouse, referring to his computer mouse, uh, surf, we all know it, it means to to um, explore the World Wide Web so, or the Internet. So my mice surf dwingend. Dwingend means dwing is to force, but dwingend is with if you eagerly um, explore new terrain, op nieuwe ruimtes af. So hierdie nieuwe ruimtes is territory. It can be websites, new information. So... Basically, in our first stanza, this boy is saying, Dad, um, I am, it's easy for me to work with a computer. I can easily get um, in on your computer with your, your password and I can master your, yeah, to get it. I, um, my mouse is, is personified, so this personification the, the idea of a mouse surfing the web, all right? So the mice, my mice surf dwingend. Um, I'm eagerly exploring the websites and getting more information. Goed, vers reel 3 sien ons daas M alliteratie. Goed, um, die personificatie, remember we have beeldspraak in Afrikaans, it can either be personificatie of a metaphor of a simile and personification is when we give a human characteristic to a non-human thing. So um, to say the most surf um, is to say that, yeah, that it, he is actually exploring the internet. Um, and I think it's important there that we also see um, that the poet used in farsi. Now in farsi is when you change word order to fit in with the rhythm or the tempo of the poem or it can be to to move words around in a line so that there's more emphasis on it okay so on sien in farsi is omgekeerde woordorde in dit beklem to in die seense gedagte pa se kode woord draf ek in a oogwink kaf maar as mens mooi dink sê mens eindelijk ek draf pa se kode woord um, in a oog van kaf, of, ja, so, um, the verb there is not in its correct position, but it's purposefully like that, to emphasize the thought, um, and to add to the tempo and rhythm of the poem, so it's noemd it in farsi, when words are not in the correct word order, but it's purposefully like that to create a certain, or to create emphasis. Goed. Strofe 2. So as ons kyk um, na strofe 2, sien ons ook a kwatrein. So strofe 1 was a kwatrein, want dit was 4 versreels. En hier sien ons in um, strofe 2 weer eens a 4 versreels, so dit is a kwatrein. Los my pa, laat my gaan. Inlichting is my religie en Google Earth my kaart. Daga le die strate vol en onies vroetel ook maar graag. So here the problem or the issue the child has, um, here it comes forward. Guys, so in die eerste strofe het die kind gesê, wat hy kan doen, en hier sê hy, los my pa, laat my gaan, leave me dad, let me go, 
Inlichting is my religie in Google is my kaart. Information is my like a religion to me and Google Earth is my map. It gives me direction. Daga le die strate vol en onnies frittel ook maar graag. Um, weed is lying around or is available everywhere and teachers also fidget around with children. So wat wat wil hy nou hier vir sy pa sê? Ons kry die idee dat hy wil hy sy pa moet hom los. He wants to be independent. He wants to, hy wil onafhankelijk wees. He wants to do his own thing. He says that inlichting is my religie. So, information is like a religion to him and that is a metaphor to say that information is a religion to him. In Google Earth, my card. Daga le die strate vol en onnies vrutel ook maar graag. In line 7 and 8, he is trying to say that um, yes, there are quite a lot of dangers possibly on the internet, but just as much as there are dangers on the internet, there are a lot of dangers um, on the streets as well or um, at school. So, Daga and um, teachers can also be dangerous. Daar is um, baie gevare in die rechte wereld ook. Goed. Strofe 3 Ons weet, pa, ons keyboards is wijzer as jy denk. Laat ons gaan, laat ons reis. Na kletsvriende in Pole, na hekse in Parijs. So, ons sien in strofe 3, dat die sien steeds bezig is om vir sy pa te probeer oortuig, dat hy weet wat hy doen. Sy, it's like this child just saying, Dad, don't nag, leave me alone, I know what I'm doing. Ons sien dit, dier dat hy sê, ons weet, and we see the, the emphasis there, ons noem het accent tekens, the, um, die accent tekens beklem toon die seense woorde, Hy wil vir sy pa verseker, hy weet waarvan hy praat en wat hy doen. Ons weet pa, ons keyboards is wijzer as jy dink. Now a keyboard we all know is um, something we use to type on um, when we sit in front of the computer. But he's also using that as a um, metaphor for his generation. Ons keyboards referring to us, the next generation. We know, and we are wiser. Wiser is wiser than you think. Okay? When he on so flak kyk nie, papa, don't think we don't know what we're doing. We are wiser than what you think. Line 11. Laat ons gaan. Laat ons reis. Okay? So he says, let us go, let us travel. Okay? And that is not literally, it is Figuratively, okay, so vergeerlik, let us travel and explore. And what does this boy want to travel and explore? Na kletsvriende in Pole, so kletsvriende is a new word, it's a niet skipping. A kletsvriend is maybe a chat, chat friends or on a chat room, maybe with Facebook Messenger or um, wherever a platform of chatting. Um, now, kletsvriende in Pole, Pole refers to Poland, it's a country um, in Europe. Uh, en dan sê hy na hekse in Parijs. Okay, and maybe he wants to go and read up on websites about uh, witches in Paris. Okay, and we see the Pole in Parijs, the P alliteration. Um, and I think it's also important just to jump back to line 10 where it says, Ons keyboards is wijzer as wat jy denk. Ons keyboards is the metaphor because the keyboards are being compared to the, the young generation. Maar om te sê, ons keyboards is wijs or wijzer is personification because a keyboard can't be wise. It's giving a human characteristic to a non-human thing. So there we see personification. Strofe 4 Strofe 4 is a tersine It is a stanza that has three lines And therefore it's called a tersine 
So we off, have to ask ourselves why is this stanza different to the rest? So we come to see what the sin, the speaker. Waar anders pa sal ons geslag, ons vla plant, ons kleims afsteek. So here, instead of trying to convince the dad um, about everything that he can do on the internet, this is now the boy, and assuring the dad that he knows what he's doing, he is now asking a rhetorical question to his dad. He's saying, where else, dad, will our generation plant our flags and stake our claims, okay? And this boy is using um, two references, like more olden ways or methods on how um, people explored new land or territory. So if you look there at the pictures, it's the, the moon landing and how America put their flag on the moon to claim that it's theirs. Or, you know, how people would... Um, so in the olden days, if people wanted to claim a territory, they would either put a flag, plant a flag, or they would stake a claim by saying, this is my territory or our territory. So, and we even see in this short stanza, the word ons is being re repeated, so had a and to emphasize him asking, what about our generation? Who saw ons geslag? Uh, ons finger afdruk. How are we going to leave an imprint or a, a, I don't know if I can use the word legacy, but he, he wants to know how, where, what are we going to discover as a next generation. And that is um, dan ook metafore. So uh, if he says, the boy asks, waar gaan ons ons vla plant of waar gaan ons ons claims afsteek? He's not literally going to do that. It is only metaphors, metaphore. He wants to know, hoe gaan ons iets niets of uitvind of ontdek as ons nie op die internet dit gaan probeer doen nie? Because that is how our generation will explore new terrain. Strofe 5 Los my pa, laat my gaan. Nou, ons sien hierdie strofe is alleenplasing, it's one line in a stanza, and it's definitely purposefully selected that way, or written that way, to emphasize the core message of this poem. En dit is die sien wat sê, pa, los my, laat my gaan, dad, leave me, let me go, or let me be. Hierdie versreel, of hierdie strofe, word beklemtoon, dier dat dit alleenplasing is. Dit is ook herhaling. If you go and look at the poem, you will see that line 16 is a repetition of line 5. In dit beklem toe in die feit dat die sien wil hees, sy pa moet om los en nie karring nie, he has this desire to be independent and to be free. But, we will see later on that this line, line 16, and then actually line 5, that it forms a contrast with um, line 22, and we'll look at line 22 when we get there. Okay, so, strofe 5, alleen plaas, en los my pa, laat my gaan. Strofe 6, maar hou op jou hart, een dag gaan daar een virus wees, een worm of een trojaanse paard wat meer gaan doen as komper kraak. So up until now, we've seen this boy being very self-confident, telling his dad that he knows what he's doing, he is in control, his dad should leave him alone. But then line 17 starts with the word maar. Yeah, and that already is in contrast with what he has been um, saying, and the word mar just shows that there's a change coming, a change in thought, or it's a but, okay, and I say, mar hou oop jou hart, he says, dad, please keep your heart open, okay, een dag gaan daar een virus wees, one day there will be a virus, a worm, a worm, of a trojaanse paard, a trojan horse, 
wat meer gaan doen as komper kraak. Okay, and those words in blue in your slide, you will see is um, all familiar terminology when it comes to dangers in the computer world. Okay, rekenaar terminologie wat die op gevaar of die internet virusse, dis negatieve woorde in die internet wereld. Okay, and he is saying that one day there will be a virus, um, a worm or a Trojan horse, which will do more than just computer hacking. And um, basically this, this boy or son is telling his dad that he wants his dad to still be there for him because um, there are dangers and and the thing that he's saying here is it's not just literal viruses um, on the internet, but everything else that is possibly dangerous on the net as well. Will that please keep your heart open for me? Strofe 7 Dan sal pa, dan sal my brain met jou wil praat. So net in daar al. Dan pa, dan sal my brein met jou wil praat. So again we see alleenplasing um, and it's another important thought that the poet wants to emphasize. Pa, then when the dangers come, my brain would like to talk to you. Alright, that's personification because um, your brain can't speak itself, you know, it's personification. But he's actually saying that when the dangers come and when I feel probably like scared or insecure, I want to talk to a real person. Um, I don't want to sit on, on a chat in a chat room or whatever. I want to talk to you um, about my concerns. So, um, you know, sien hierdie alleen plaas en die daar op dat hierdie sien baie graag um, wil weet of sy pa daar vir my gaan wees. So remember... Up until line 16, this boy was very confident. But now here, from line 17 onwards, we see that he's not doubting, but maybe doubting a little bit, but he's questioning that if dangers come, would his dad still be there for him? Strofe 8 Sal jy daar wees, pa, as ek moet vlug van a pedofiel of a sluipdief in die nacht? Sal jou oor dan ook wees, pa, a ESB vir my gemoed. He is asking his father, would you be there for me, dad, when I have to flee from a pedophile or a sluipdief in die nacht? And a sluipdief in die nacht is like um, someone, uh, like a thief, thief at night time. Um, and sluipdief is you don't even know of the person. Um, so both those represent dangers, okay? Sal pa daar vir my wees if I have to flee from these type of things. Sal jou oor dan oop wees, pa? So we see the O sound being emphasized there. It's assonancy of the O sound. Sal jou oor oop wees, pa? Okay, for your ear to be open, that is a metaphor to ask if his dad will listen to him. A USB for my mood or my heart and my mind. Okay, so a USB in computer terminology is used to actually store documents on. It's also uh, some people would consider a safe a safe way of um, saving data or information and then putting it away somewhere. So it's like a, a safe place to to save information. So he would, he is actually asking his dad, will you be a safe place for me, a, a, a USB for my heart and my mind? The last strophe, strophe 9, it's similar to line 17 that starts with the word mar, um, showing that here comes something different. This stanza start, starts with the word off, asking or, okay? So he has asked his dad now, would you be there for me? But then he says here in line 26 and 27, 
of gaan jy stug een vierwal gooi en my die kieberstorm self laat ver? Or, are you going to grumpily or firmly um, throw a firewall my way? And a firewall is also computer language to say to block something or someone. Okay, so this is a metaphor, a metaphor what is sien vraag aan pa a vierwal gooi, meaning you are going to block me, you are going to, um, you are not going to listen to me, jy gaan weier om na my te luister. En my die kieberstorm self laat veg. And are you going to let me fight the cyberstorm all by myself? And cyberstorm, kieberstorm is also a neat skipping, a new word. And this is just a, almost a, a collective noun to represent all the dangers um, out there. And it's a metaphor for problems or dangers that you can find not just on the internet, but on the worldwide, ach, ja, in the world, in broad. Okay, so, so he's asking, it's ending also with the rhetorical question, asking his dad, are you going to help me? Or um, ending here with, or are you going to throw me a firewall and you are going to let me fight the cyberstorm all by myself? Good, jylle so Ter afsluiting, in conclusion, let's look at the theme, the thema. Die hele gedig gaan eindelijk da, oor die feit dat daar is gevare op die internet en die ontdekkingsreise in die geschiedenis word vergelijk met die sprekerse ontdekkingsreise op die internet. So, the adventures are in, the, in history and in the past of how people explored new territory is being compared to how the person speaking in our poem, the young boy, is also exploring the internet. Both of these type of expeditions in the past, but also currently when you go on an exploration of the internet, both have promises, but also dangers. Okay, so and I think to make it more practical for us today, we always have to know that it's great to explore new things, what is the lesson we take from this? It's, it's great to explore because there's lots of promises in exploring and some things that we can learn, but we need to be aware that with everything that's good, there might be something bad as well. Not to be negative, but we have to be realistic. Okay. Um, and then, Here Be Dragons is a metaphor. Okay, so we need to know that the title, Here Be Dragons, is a, is a metaphor of um, then the dangers that we can find um, all around us. Lastly, um, the tone and the atmosphere of mood of the poem. Die gedig het baie persoonlijke tone, it's very personal. The boy sharing his thoughts, um, the spreker praat direct met sy pa, he speaks directly to his dad, and the scene is aanvankelijk vol self-vertrouwen, maar later is hy meer onzeker. So the boy starts all very confident, but then in the end he's a bit unsure and uncertain about um, how he would feel if his dad is not there for him. Okay, so guys, that is the poem, Here Be Dragons. Um... I think, um, again, to just conclude and make it practical, it is important that um, in life we also face, um, you know, the possibility of those dangers, you know, the Trojan horses or the viruses. And ironically, we are sitting in a lockdown season where, you know, there's this virus roaming around. And I think it's important that, yeah, even though we are all individual beings, independent and trying to stake our claims and 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 almost leave our mark as your yeah, individuals, you know, on a mission, it's important that we keep open channels and connections with our dear and loved ones, and that we are there for each other, so that when you know the challenges of life and the dangers of life. Um, are close and we are experiencing them that we don't get firewalls from our closest 
loved ones, but that we are actually there for each other, that we are USBs for each other to to be a safe net and a safe haven for each other. Um, I do think that's important. So um, yes, um, I hope you enjoyed this poem.